While playing the game of poker, you're going to experience the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. Some days you may come in and do everything right and win every single pot that you play. Other days, you may come in, you may do everything wrong, and you lose all the money on the table and the money in your pocket. When it feels like you'll never win and the downswings come in, sometimes the only thing left to do is drop down in stakes and start over. Unfortunately, we've had some tough times this week. We're gonna have to drop back down to one, two, buying in for $100. If we don't make money this session, we're gonna have to find a job. The first hand we play here, we have Jack-9 offsuit. We call a $5 straddle and go four ways to the flop. We end up going all in on a flop of Jack-10-9, two hearts, risking it all here with two pair. This is our last $100 to play for. If we lose this, I'm not sure exactly what's gonna happen with my poker career. The button thinks for a while and ends up calling my all in. He puts all of his money in there. And now the big blind thinks for a little bit of time and he shoves all his money in as well. Three ways here with two pair. Can we hold up? Can we get the triple up? We show our hand and we have live action footage of this run out. All right, I have two pair. Oh shit, that's no good. I need a jack. We are all in here with our last $100 to play with and we flop two pair against a straight. The big blind has seven eight of diamonds he flopped a straight. We're really gonna have to improve if we wanna play poker again. It's all gonna come down to this run out. All right, it was a joke, it was a prank. I clickbaited you guys in the title, I'm not broke. I had a great session last weekend at 1025, making about $3,500, had a pretty good week this week. However, when I first started playing poker about three years ago, I actually went broke two times. So I'm gonna tell you guys that story now. All right, so I moved inside to the elevator. It's the only quiet place in here that I don't have to wear a mask and it's way too hot outside to continue talking to the camera, so, First things first, to become a professional poker player, you gotta have a bankroll. And at the time, I had no bankroll. I had a job and all my money went to basically expenses and rent. So after about $500 saved up, I decided to take a shot at one, two, trying to spin up that bankroll. I ended up making about $1,500 in the first week or two. So things were looking pretty good. However, after some bad run and some bad play, I ended up basically going broke after two weeks and had to quit poker for about a month until I could save up more money. So about a month or so later, I saved up another 500, 600 bucks and took another shot at one, two. This time went a little bit better. I think I made about 2,200 to $2,500 for a poker bankroll before, run bad, play bad, lost all my money, win broke again. Pretty unfortunate. I had to basically quit for at least a month or so before I could try again. The third time I tried was December, 2018. I started with $500 and I was able to run that $500 all the way up to where I'm at now, playing 510 and 1025. So the moral of the story here, guys, is bankroll management is super important. However, you're gonna have to take big risks. I was willing to risk a big portion of my net worth to get what I wanted. I failed a couple times, but I kept working hard and was able to get there. So same thing goes for you guys. Keep working hard, keep studying, don't quit, get back on that felt, all right? We're gonna get out of this elevator. We're gonna head down, play some two, five, five, ten. show you guys some hands. Let's go, I'll meet you down there. Oh yeah, and don't think I forgot about this one two hand where we're all in two pair versus a straight for a $300 pot. I'm gonna save that though for the end of the video. It's a pretty wild ending, so stay tuned for that. First hand we play here at 510, button raises, we call the big blind with queen 10 offsuit. Flop comes down, ace, queen, six, we flop middle pair, two hearts on the board, he bets $25, we check call. Turn card is a six, pair is the bottom card. On the flop, he bets $25 into $75, so kind of a weak sizing. I think he would size up if he had an ace, so here on the turn, we are now chopping with all queens, so he bets again, he bets $70. We basically have to check call here, our hand's pretty strong, a button versus big blind. The river comes out, jack of hearts, brings in that front door flush draw. We check it over to him, and he puts out a bet of $200. So now he's super polarized, saying he basically has a boat with pocket aces, ace six, or he has a flush. 
We have the Ten of Hearts, so we definitely block a lot of combinations of flushes that he could have. I think he would bet bigger on the flop if he had a flush draw too, so this is just a weird spot. When someone's repping such a thin range, I usually just put in the call, especially at 510 when my opponents can be bluffing. I tank for a minute and make the call. He shows Queen Jack offsuit for a two pair, better two pair than ours, so he got me to pay him off. Seat 5 fish, Lexo, gives him $200 on the river. Nice hand, buddy. Middle position opens to $35. Next act calls $35. We are on the button with pocket jacks. We make it $150, 4x plus a little bit more, and both of the players end up folding, so we don't get any action here with pocket jacks. Just take down this money preflop. Now we pick up another jack, but with a king next to it. King jack of clubs here under the gun, raise it up to $40. Middle position player calls, and the small blind calls $40. So we're going three ways to the flop. The dealer puts out a flop of 3, 6, 7, no clubs. Absolutely awful board for our under the gun range and for our exact hand. It checks to us, we check, and the middle position player checks behind. Turn card is the king of spades. So now we make top pair, small blind checks again. We decide to check, thinking that maybe the middle position player will blast off with a bluff or possibly a worse king. Middle position does put in a bet. He makes it $125, basically a pot size bet here. Now it's back on the small blind and he calls. Doesn't look great for us here. We have king with a jack kicker. I think the middle position player could have a hand like king three or king six that he checked on the flop. Now he hit two pair. He could also have a hand like king queen or ace king. However, my hand's really strong here. We could possibly suck out on the river with a jack. So we're not going to fold. We make the call for 125 as well. The river card here is the ace of diamonds. When it checks to me, I consider leading out huge for a bluff, trying to get my opponent off a hand like king queen that we're losing to, king jack that we're chopping with, or even maybe get him to fold a hand like king three for two pair. However, king with the jack kicker is just super strong. I don't think we need a bluff with this hand. We check and my opponent checks back and shows king queen. So his queen is going to play here. He's going to take down this pot. Next up here, we pick up another beautiful hand, ace, 10 of clubs from the hijack. We raise it up to $35. The cutoff calls $35. Big blind thinks for a while and calls $35 as well. So going three ways to the flop of ace, eight, seven, no clubs. We flop top pair with a good kicker. On this board, we're always going to be C Benny. When it checks to us, we put out a bet of $60, trying to get value from weaker aces, any sevens, any eights, hands like five, six, nine, ten for a straight draw, or even a hand like Jack 10. The big blind thinks for a little bit of time, and he puts in $60 as well. He makes the call. The turn card nine of diamonds really reduces the strength of our hand. We had a really good hand on the flop. Now we're losing to a hand like ace nine, seven, nine, eight, nine, jack 10, five, six. So when our opponent checks to us, we put in some pot control and check this one back. The river is the six of diamonds, so it gives us a 10 high straight. The big blind who looks like a young thinking player now leads out for $180 on this card. A lot of the times we're going to be chopping here. Sometimes he's going to be bluffing and then sometimes he's going to have a flush. So we can't raise. We can just call. We call with our ace 10, 10 high straight, and he shows us jack eight of diamonds. So he went runner runner flush on us. This session is not going too great so far. We're running pretty bad. We made a bad call, and now we're getting some bad runouts here. Make it a straight when our opponent makes a flush. I don't think we can do anything here, but pay him off and move on to the next hand. Next up, we have Ace King. Raise it up to $40 from under the gun. Next act calls in seat seven calls. Remember this guy in seat seven. We're going to play a big hand with him this hand and next hand. Now the small blind thinks for a while and puts in a three bet. Three bets up to $140. This sizing is pretty small here. We're definitely not going to go four ways with ace king, especially from a small blind squeezing range. So we decide to four bet. We're going to four bet up to $505. I expect this four bet to get through a lot of the time here. Next act folds and now seat seven leans back in his chair, puts his arms over his head and goes into the tank. Super weird here. He overcalls $40. Now he's thinking about calling $505. What kind of hand can he have here? This player was not a fish. He was playing pretty snug. He just doubled up for a $6,000 pot with pocket queens, not really getting out of line at all. So when he's thinking here, I put him on a hand like pocket tens, pocket jacks, or maybe even pocket queens. He didn't want to three bet me preflop, but now he thinks that he can't fold a hand that strong. Seat seven tanks for over a minute and makes the call for $505. Super weird. Calls 40, then calls 505. The small blind quickly folds, so we're going heads up. Not expecting this, but hopefully we can hit an ace or a king against this guy. With over $1,000 in the middle in a four bet pot, we see a flop of jack, four, deuce, rainbow. Not the board we were wanting here. Given the range that we put him on, pocket tens, pocket jacks, and pocket queens, he is never going to be folding on this board. So we decide to just give up here. We're going to check, and if he bets, we will fold. Maybe he'll check behind with a hand like ace, king, and we will chop. 
Long story short here, we end up checking it all the way to the river. We show ace-king, and seat seven shows ace-king as well. So now that kind of makes sense. He doesn't want a three-bet preflop, but feels like he can't fold to my four-bet with a hand that strong. So we end up chopping this one up. All right, about three hands later, there's a limp under the gun. Seat seven, same player from last hand. Didn't do a lot of raising. Now makes it 50. There's two callers. We look down at pocket kings in the big blind. We three-bet it up to $300. Now remember, seat seven, flat called ace king preflop, and then called a four bet for $505. So now he raises to 50, we three bet him to 300, and now he min four bets to 640. This is just a nasty spot. 90% of the time here, this is always aces. So we can discount a hand like pocket queens and ace king from his range. He really never has that. He could possibly have kings as well, but I think this is mostly aces almost all the time. I look at his stack. He covers me. I have about $3,000. It's only $300 more for me to call. If I call and hit a king, I'm pretty sure I can stack this guy. So I end up making the call for $640 going here to the flop. Playing another big, massive four bet pot here with seat seven. Flop comes out four three deuce, no king on it. Oh well, what can we do? We check it over to him. He bets five hundred dollars here. I don't think I can fold just yet. We could possibly be chopping with pocket kings, and if he has aces and shoves the turn, I'll probably fold. So he bets five hundred. I make the call. The pot is now over two thousand dollars. I have about two thousand dollars left in my stack. The turn card is the eight of spades. Doesn't help us at all. We check it over to him. He instantly goes all in. I end up tanking for a little bit of time and telling him I got the second best hand, man. But I'm pretty sure you have the first. I end up folding, and he shows black pocket aces. All right, guys. We've been playing for about two and a half hours now, and I'm already on my second tilt break, so it's not looking good for us. As you guys saw, getting coolered with top pair versus better top pair, straight versus flush, and then aces versus kings. I mean, not looking good. Last night, Friday night at Magic City, I can't film there. I lost a $4,000 pot getting three outered on the river. So I think some of that tilt from last night I brought to tonight's session because tonight I just, boom, I just got on tilt so quick. And then the aces versus kings got on tilt again. Obviously don't like playing when I'm on tilt, so I take a little break. Feeling a little better already, but I think I need another five minutes before I go in there. Don't want to be punting off any money. I'm happy with my plays, actually. I think I lost a minimum in most of the spots, so that's good. Going to play another six hours. Hopefully we run good. Hopefully we win some hands. Let's get back in there. Let's go. We get back from our break, and there's a guy at our table now playing pretty wild. I don't know if he's drunk, if he's high, or if he's just crazy, but one time he raised to $100. Everybody folded. He showed 6-4 offsuit. So now about 30 minutes later, he raises to $100 again. I have king-queen on the button. I 3 bet it up to $275. Now the big blind goes into the tank, and while he's thinking, the crazy player under the gun just folds right out of turn before the big blind even has acted, which is a huge disadvantage for me. Now the big blind can make a raise knowing that the under the gun player is not going to call or go all in. So he may think that I'm three betting this crazy player light, so now he might be four betting me light. Him folding out of turn is just not fair to me, and this has happened like six or seven times, so I asked the dealer to call the floor, and you guys will hear what happens next. Gail, can you call the floor about that? He's folded out of turn a couple times, and it's really mattering here, obviously. Well, it's the first time with me that he folded out of turn. This is a significant... This is it. All right, you can call the floor about that, right? This is a significant pot, so it matters. You heard that right. This guy literally lowered his mask, looked right at me, and said, go F yourself, right to my face. <laughs> Pretty crazy here. The dealer ended up calling the floor. The floor came over. Super professional, as always. They told him, hey, buddy, you can't be using the F word at players at the table. You're going to have to leave. So sucks for us that this action player has to leave, but can't be using the F word at the table. We end up folding this king, queen, and the big blind wins. Pretty weird hand here. It never happened to me before. Last hand of the night, and it is a wild one. We wake up with ace, king of clubs in the cutoff, make it $35. Angry Scott on the button. You guys will know who I'm talking about if you play at Hard Rock. He's tilted, as always. He makes it 100 Now the big blind, a super action player who hates to fold, calls $100. Now it's back on us with ace, king. We end up putting in the four bet. We make it $425 here with a suited ace king. Angry Scott calls pretty quickly, and the big blind calls pretty quickly. So going three ways to another huge bloated pot here. The dealer puts out a board of king, jack, six, two clubs. We flop top pair, top kicker with a nut flush draw in a four bet pot, three ways. It checks to us. I'm about to bet, but I look over at Angry Scott and he gives off a pretty big tell. 
He puts his head down, lets out a sigh, and acts like he's super unimpressed by the flop, that he hates it. And I've learned from the past that when players act like this, it's actually the opposite. It means that they smash the board. He wants me to think he hates the flop, so maybe I'll bet, but in reality, he really has a super strong hand. I actually put him on a set here. I think he has pocket jacks. I think that's a hand that he would three bet on the button and then call a four bet with, so I actually put in the check. It looks like our read was right. Angry Scott thinks for a little bit of time and puts out a big, massive bet, $600 here. I don't think he would be doing that with anything but a set or two pair like King Jack. I think that he would be betting smaller with a hand like Ace King himself, and we block that hand as well. So now the big blind thinks for a little bit of time, and he makes the call. So now we have to decide, should we shove all in here, or should we just call? I decide to just call the $600, looking to hopefully hit a club on the turn. Given this player type and this bet size, and I'm pretty sure we're behind here to a set or two pair, so hopefully we can hit a club. This pot is massive already. With $3,000 in the middle and about $1,500 behind, the turn card is the seven of clubs. We make the nut flush. I'm stuck about $2,000 on this session. It literally cannot get any better. I hit the perfect card on the turn, giving me the nuts. I look at my stack again. I have about $1,500 behind. I decide I'm just going to shove it all in here. I think Angry Scott has a set, and he's never folding. We shove all in, and Angry Scott on the button snap calls our all in here. So this is looking great for us. Big blind things for a little bit of time and folds. We decide to run this board out twice. First river is a deuce. We have the nuts, so we're definitely going to win that pot. Second river is a seven. Pairs the board. Angry Scott shows a set of sixes, so he's got a set on the top and a full house on the bottom. We end up chopping this huge, massive $6,000 pot up. That's all we have for this 510 session, but I am going to show you what happened in that first one-two hand when we have two pair with jack nine, all in three ways. So obviously we sat down at 1-2 just to make a dramatic intro for you guys. You guys already saw that, but we actually got into a pretty crazy pot here. $100, three-way, all-in with Jack-9, two pair versus a straight versus a open-ender. I'm going to let you guys listen to the audio to see what happens. Oh, a heart. Heart. Oh! 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 We hit it! Sick. We came to 1-2 just to make a funny intro video. We ended up sucking out huge on the river, making a full house versus a straight and winning this big $300 pot. I'm sorry, I don't mean, I don't mean to uh, celebrate, buddy. I'm sorry. We just came here for the funny intro video, expecting to lose $100 most of the time. However, we got it in bad and the dealer gave us a full house on the river. We're going to have to reward her now. We decide we're going to tip her big. We're going to give her all the money in the pot. All right. This is what we're going to do. All that for you. You keep it. You keep it. I'm out of here. For you. All right. Well, one of those days, one of those days where you just lose every single pot. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I just, I couldn't win. I had the nuts. I chopped. Aces versus kings. I lost. Um, getting coolered. Bad beats. Just not good. Not good. I don't think I won a single pot at 510. Just tilt, tilt, tilt. Just right here. Right, just tilted. But what does make me feel better is I showed you guys the last part of that Jack 9 offsuit hand that you guys just watched. Crazy, crazy. River to boat and stack these two guys. And then I just told the dealer, I said, look, all that money is yours. In the middle, 300 bucks, that's your tip. I don't want it. I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Um, she had no idea. She was super confused. She just was trying to give the money to the other guy. And I said, no, 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 no. It's your money. You, it's your tip. And everyone's like, just take the tip. And then she tried to give it to the other guy. And I said, no, I won, but I don't, I'm not taking the money. You're going to take it. I'm out. I'm leaving. So she finally understood it. And she finally put it all, whatever, down her tip, tip box. So I'm glad to help her out. She's always been a super nice dealer to me. And, um, she gave me a jack on the river. So she deserves it. So another thing was I had like three or four people to come up to me tonight and say they recognized the vlog, say, hey, one dealer from Coconut Creek, I think a guy named Ryan, and then I talked to another guy named Ethan, and then somebody else, I forget their name. But if you guys ever see me in here and you want to say anything, ask me any questions, don't be afraid to come up. Uh, definitely cool how the vlog is growing and people are starting to recognize and uh, got some fans out there, which is cool. But um, that's it for this one. We were in the game for 510 at for $5,000. Cashed out for 24 and change, so lost about $2,600. Not the best, but I'm actually in a pretty good mood now after, uh, you know, donating a little bit to the dealer and doesn't feel so bad. So until next time, I'll see you guys.